Okay, so in this problem, we will first use statics to solve for the two unknown reactions, RA and RB. And then we're gonna need this value of RA to start the, the calculation for shear and hence bending moment. And then we can calculate bending stress and design for the minimum required section modulus. So on the left here, I have opened my INUN program, which allows you to integrate step functions or delta functions. So for example, a step function can be integrated, no problem. So let's look at the statics problem first, and we'll solve those equations as well on the calculator. So we have the UDL, which as you know from statics, is equivalent to a concentrated load at the centroid of the load. But let's not forget there's also self-weight. The self-weight, we don't know how much it is at this moment because we don't know what section we're gonna uh, choose. So we're gonna let it be zero for now. So let's input all that. Okay, in fact, let me open a new page for my new work, but make sure it's on the same problem. Okay, so insert a page. As a calculator, it's on 1.2. So we still have everything that we have on 1.1 and 1.3. So self-weight is to be included, but at the current moment, it's, it's zero. The length of the beam, L, is going to be uh, five meters. So let's input those basic parameters. And um, I can immediately write down my first static equation. So let's call the EQ1. The first equation says all the downward loads equal to the total upward load. So there are only two upward loads in this case. So it's uh, RA and RB. So let's uh, write down all the upward loads equal all the downward loads. So the downward load, so let's not forget, it's the self-weight times the length plus a 50 kilonewton concentrated load plus another UDL for, and for a distance of three meters. So it's a 60 kilonewton altogether. So let's put down 60 here. So that's my first equation. My next equation is gonna be a moment equation about A. So taking all the moments about point A, we also do not forget there's a contribution due to the self-weight, which acts at the center of the beam at the 2.5 moment arm. So let's write that down as equation number two, EQ2 is going to be the moment. Okay, so first let's count all the clockwise moments. There's one term due to the UDL, that's um, 20 times three, that's 60 kilonewtons times the moment arm of um, at the central distance, which is 1.5, plus the self-weight, okay, the self-weight is, um, or self-weight times L, that's the amount of kilonewtons, I think at the center of the beam, which is at 2.5. So that's the total weight multiplied to a moment arm of 2.5 meters. That accounts for the self weight of the beam. Right now it's zero, but we're gonna copy, copy and paste all these things later. So let's put that in. So we can copy and paste correctly later on. Plus the moment due to this uh, 50 kilonewton, which is also a clockwise moment. So 50 times uh, a moment arm of four meters. All those clockwise moments will be equal to all the, counterclockwise moments, but there's only one, which is due to the reaction R sub B. So that's equal to R sub B times the length of the beam, which is the moment arm. So we've got two equations. Of course, you can solve the second one right away, but let's just uh, call it the solution using the full solve command, equation one and equation two, you can find the end word by pressing this book key and then you press A you will find the end word. So if you have more than one equation, you can put them all in. Equation one and equation two, comma, and then you need to open a pair of 
curly brackets, and then your unknown, unknowns to be solved for. So 52 and 58, let me just check that um, they are what this uh, book finds, 52 and 58. So far, so good. Now, we need the first term, um, R sub A, because if you look at an infinitesimal, infinitesimal section here on the very left at A, you know that you have an upward load of uh, R A, which is the reaction from the pin. So the downward internal shear at that point, V zero is going to, going to be exactly R A. So let's put that in a variable called V zero. But if you just type R A at this moment, nothing has been defined yet, okay? Because the solution SOL is just a statement that nevertheless you can use to make assignments. So if you do this, however, R A, and then uh, the substitution sign, substitute whatever is set in the solution, then you get a number, okay? So that's as good as saying RA, given that RA equals 52, okay? So V0 will be exactly this object. And now everything will proceed very quickly. So we know that integration of minus W gives you the shear. What is W? That's the crucial thing that you learn from this class. The W here, has several terms. It's a function of X. It has got this uh, 20 kilonewton that needs to be turned off once you hit three meters. So it's 20 times one minus H of X minus three. It has such a term. In order to turn it off at the appropriate place, it's also got this uh, downward 50 kilonewtons at a particular place, namely at four meters. So it's, this is how you write it. Okay, so that's it. You don't need to include R sub B because it happens at the very end. And if you do integrate it, nothing will be useful, okay? You will just get a step function of H minus five, which is always uh, zero anyway throughout the beam. So let's uh, put in our W so that we can integrate for V. So W, the load is going to be, now let's not forget, it should also include the self weight, which is zero at this point, plus your 20 kilonewtons times a step function. So that's one minus a step function, which uh, needs to be turned on at three, so that you have uh, one minus one. Once X goes beyond three meters, that one minus one will, come out and kill the 20 so that there's no more load. Plus the downward load of 50, but we need to turn such concentrated loads into distributed loads using the delta function. Okay, so you can find those Greek symbols by con pressing control, the book key. And the similarly written as the step function, where it happens, you write it down after X minus, so it's X minus four. So that's my load. Now it's easy. Integrate minus W at V zero, you get the shear. And the moment you just integrate the shear plus initial value of the moment, but it's zero anyway, if you look at the support condition, there's no moment at this point, right? So now we have done the problem in terms of bending moment. And we are now in a position to plot it as long as we are willing to define H at this point. You do not define H before this point because H needs to be a symbolic um, variable when you use my integration program. But now we're done with all the integration. So you can define H now, Let the, let's define it. H of X is this built-in function 
use the book key and then press W and uh, you can scroll down until you see when. When X is smaller than zero, then give me a zero, otherwise give me a one. Okay, now if you look at M again, it has a more explicit definition. But right now, as you can check, you cannot integrate it anymore. Okay, it gets stuck. So that's the price to pay. But we don't need to use the integration anymore. So we can proceed to the next part, which is to um, plot M. Okay, so insert a graph and plot M. You can use a uh, menu, zoom, oops, menu, zoom, and uh, fit. Now, it does give me some extra parts where the beam does not exist. So uh, you can press Control G to see what you have entered. Scroll up, I put M there. Let me uh, control left arrow to go back to make a little bit of modification. Let's call that object to plot, let's call it M MP or M plot. Let's modify it by trimming it on the left-hand side and right-hand side of the beam's two ends. So it's gonna be M times H of X minus H of X minus L. So think about what this does. When X is negative, this is zero. This is also zero. So you have a zero multiplied to M. So you kill all the expression for M when you are on the left of the beam's left hand end. Also, if you're on the if you if you go beyond five meters, then this of course is a one, but this also becomes a one. So again, you have one minus one. So again, you have a zero to hit M to kill it. Okay. So uh, you can go back to the plot. You can go up and let's not plot M, but M plot instead. Okay, is that what we called it? MP plot. Okay, sorry, there's an extra P here. MP plot. Okay, so now you don't see anything extra. So uh, let's do a zoom again and do zoom fit. Or you can zoom by a uh, box. Anyway, I just want to get the maximum value, which is obviously here. So let's just uh, use menu, analyze graph maximum to get it. Give it lower bound and upper bound. So the maximum value for the bending moment is this. If you're using the calculator, you can use this navigation pad to move your pointer to the value that you want to store until the hand shows up. And you click here in the middle of the nav navigation pad and you press control menu. There's a store option, which is number five. You can store it into some variable name. Let's just call it uh, M max. Because we're gonna do calculations with it. So let's return to the calculator page by pressing control left arrow. Let's see what M max has stored. If something has a value in it, then it appears in both font. Okay, it's 67.6. So our required section modulus is gonna be Mx over the uh, allowable stress. So that's 160. Of course, be careful with the units, okay? Uh, I'm not going to waste your time uh, doing all the unit conversion according to the book. In meter cube, it's uh, 423 times 10 to the negative 6. But since the section modulus values are listed in 1,000 units of mm cube, let's convert it to that unit so that uh, it's 423 that you need to look for. So we go ahead and check the table. Oops, uh, messed up. Okay. So anyway, uh, after checking the table, we will see, let me just make a long story short, that several choices are good. They all have the required section modulus, more than that, in fact, but the lightest one is this one, W360 by 32.9. The 32.9 is the number of kilograms in meters for this beam. So now what do you do? 
what we need to do is include the self weight of this chosen beam and go back and redo all the calculations. So you see why now I prefer using the calculator. Okay, so let's press uh, control seven to go to the very top and enter to copy it. So what do we need to do here is include the self weight. It's no longer zero, it is 32.9, that's in kilograms. So we need to multiply to G, which is 9.81 to convert it into Newtons. But the units are in kilonewtons when I started the problem. So here I have the per meter weight in Newtons. I need to divide into 1000 okay, to have it properly in kilonewtons per meter. Uh, if you see any problem, let me know. Okay, so now that changes the first line of the static equation as well. Let's press control seven again, but be careful to go down to the second equation. Now I wrote down the equation correctly, including the self weight. So now all I need to do is copy and paste. Okay, so that's my new second equation, the moment equation. So uh, now let me solve them again we see that both reaction values have changed a little bit because you have not changed the problem a whole lot. You are just adding, if you think about it, if you look at the numbers, the add of self weight is not that much compared to the existing uh, loads on the beam. So the reactions do not change by that much, but they do change. So now again, let's go up by control seven and uh, copy, just keep copying, okay? So uh, V0 is going to be a new value. And we need to integrate again. So you see why it would be quite tedious if you did everything by hand. So here's the new W in terms of the non-zero self weight now. Everything else is the same, right? Because the load applied are the same. Oops, now you see a problem because I cannot integrate anymore. What do you do? Don't panic. You delete that variable. D, that's a built-in command for deleting variables, or you can find it here. Okay, so uh, press control, sorry, press, press the book key and then D, and then you can press control three to come down quickly to uh, delete variable command. We want to delete the variable H, make it forget how to plot it, okay? so that we can integrate it. That's the cost of using this program. Okay, so now we go back and uh, define W again. So now you see it's a clean variable H that I can use for integration in my integration program. So I can, I will do this line. I better make sure V0 is the correct value. So now let me integrate it again. Oops, sorry. Let me, actually it's quite mechanical from this point on, right? You just, uh, keep on doing integration of, oops. I think I erased some lines by accident, but that's okay. Oh, that's okay, it's here. V is the initial value plus the integral of minus W because I have quite a few lines. I'm getting myself confused here. And then I need uh, to integrate M, integrate for M here, this line. Okay. And then I can, again, find the line where I defined H after I, I was done with my, all my integration. So let's define it again. And maybe do an, another M plot, okay? Let's go M2. We have M, but we, we know that we want to trim it by uh, a step function here. Okay, actually I can copy and paste, but I, I remember what I did. So let's plot M2 now. 
Uh, let's let's do another graph. So let's plot M2. Again, let's zoom and find the maximum value. So this time you see it's no longer 67.6. .6. It is a different number now, which I can again store into maybe M new, whatever you can call it. And let's now go back and check what is the required section modulus. Okay, so you do need to do this second iteration. So now that uh, M new over 160, we know it's gonna be 429, okay? Approximately 429 in um, thousand mm cubed. Do we have 429 with the section chosen? The answer is yes, okay? Because you see what we chose was this. In the previous round, in the first round, we chose this, which offers you 474. Um, thousand mm cubed. And what we need, even with its self weight is just 429. So it's okay, we can stop now. If it's not okay, then you need to go and look at the next um, strongest or next lightest beam and see if it's uh, still strong enough among, among these uh, choices. Okay, so it may take an iteration or two. In this case, it only took one iteration. If you're not lucky, you may have to do two or even more iterations. Okay, so that's, uh, let's see how long it took. I started at 3.14, took about 10 minutes. Okay, there were some hiccups, but this is definitely much easier to do by uh, than, than doing it by hand because you're gonna have to keep solving equations, keep generating bending moment diagrams, keep finding the maximums. So I think using the calculator is a much better way to go. Okay, thank you for watching.